Hey folks, in this episode, I'm sitting down with my good friend, Mr. Mark Silber to talk about the secrets to creating amazing photographs. This is Twit. All right, a lot of us have a lot of friends that we've known forever. This guy, Mark Silber, I've known for more than a decade. He has, has his fingers in everything. He is the quintessential multimediographer, creates videos, audio, uh, printed books, which is what we're gonna talk about today, his new book, The Secrets to Creating Amazing Photographs. But Mark Silber is everywhere. What's going on, Mark? Frederick, I'm so happy to be back here. And you know, it's been 10 years since we visited Ansel Adams' darkroom. That was pretty amazing, wasn't it? Right, yeah. We went down to, uh, what was that? Carmel Car by the Sea, right? Carmel by the Sea, it's about five minutes from where I live right now. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was that was an experience. I was looking at that video the other day and uh, yeah, Michael Adams, Ansel Adams. Michael Adams. Yeah, what a, Ansel what a Adams. gentleman son. he is. Yeah, that is crazy. So for the for the folks who may not be familiar with you, Mark, give us a give us your 30 second elevator pitch of who is Mark Silver? Who is Mark Silver? Yeah. Well, you know, I've been a photographer since age 12 was when I learned the darkroom magic. And I managed to travel with my camera all over the world. So I've taken a lot of photographs. And about 10 years ago, well, before that, I was teaching a lot of workshops. And 10 years ago, I jumped into the video world, started my show, Advancing Your Photography, where I managed to interview some of the world's foremost photographers, Joe McNally, Chase Jarvis, yeah. Chris Burkhardt, who's become a phenomenon, and lots of other, Bambi Cantrell and you know, I had all this data stored in my in my videos that I thought I need to bring this to the world in the form of books. Mm -hmm. So I wrote my uh, initial book, Advancing Your Photography, that was released a year ago, which is a complete guide to photography. Lots of quotes and things that I've gotten from these stellar people in their interviews. And then most recently is this new book, which is all about composition. And meanwhile, I keep producing my video show. I'm actually producing other people now that are on my channel. I've got three very talented creatives who are uh, putting up videos every week. So I'm moving more into a, a producer role and uh, sticking with my writing, I'm doing a lot of writing these days. I love it. I love it, I love it. Okay, so advancing your photography and and now the secrets to creating amazing photos. I gotta tell you, you know, I am, uh, I'm always tongue in cheek, one eye closed when I hear people say secrets. What secrets, what secrets are you revealing that aren't readily available in this book? Well, you know, actually, these are legitimate secrets because nobody that I've found has actually put these uh, tools together. So the subtext to that title is 83 composition tools. And ah. I decided to dive into the world of composition because these days, so many people are shooting with smartphones. They don't really need to know the inner workings of a camera. Right. And even if they do, What's left is two things you have to master. One is lighting. And I did touch upon lighting and at least natural lighting fairly thoroughly in my first book. And there's a lot of more that I could write. And I may write another book about lighting. But then it, it leaves the, the big subject of how do you compose a photograph? Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's two schools here. You take the Edward Weston approach to composition when he was asked how do you learn composition he said there's no rules you kind of have to figure it out on your own i mean that's on one extreme and the other extreme there's people that seem to have nothing but a set of rules you know the rule of thirds and leading yep. lines and all these things they kind of try to you know, make composition within this framework of rules. Mm -hmm. And like most things in life, the answer lies in the middle. Yeah. I mean, truthfully, there are no rules to composition. Obviously, you know, there's a law of gravity. And if you drop your, you let go of your camera and it falls, it's probably going to break. That's <laughs> yeah. a law. That's a law. That's a law. But, you know, if you violate the law or the rule of thirds, are the photo police going to issue you a citation or is your camera yeah. going to break? No. The rules in art, I think the rules in art and photography are, are more 
suggestions. It's a suggestion they're, of they're guidelines. Guidelines. They're, guidelines. They're guidelines, and you can choose to use them or not. But the reason why I wrote this book is because I was asked over and over again, Mark, you know, how can I improve my composition? And I looked around, I realized nobody had written this one volume that covers kind of the whole spectrum of how you compose not only a photograph, but you can apply, you can apply this to any visual art, whether it's filmmaking or drawing or painting. And the secrets really are that the master painters have this all figured out. You know, Da Vinci and Rembrandt and Monet, they, they really obviously knew what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And photography didn't just spring up, believe it or not, in the last decade, as many Instagrammers probably think, that it just sort of <laughs> sprung out of nowhere. Yeah. Photography, you know, as a fine art subject is only about 100 years old. Oh, yeah. And where it drew its roots from is painting and drawing. And where those uh, key classical artists, again, like da Vinci, who I, I drew from in this book over and over again, figured out what are the compositional techniques that really help create a stunning in their case, uh, drawing or painting. And if we use those same tools in photography, we can bring about stunning or amazing results. And that's so that's interesting. I was having a conversation the other day with a friend of mine. I think it was just yesterday, I think it was. And we were we were t t talking about this and this is this, you're the perfect person to to ask this question to, but it's the yeah. it was the idea of does it matter, right? So we are we are in an age now, like you mentioned Instagram, we're in an age now where people can, you know, close your eyes and take a photo and put a filter on it and you get something that's reasonable, you know, yeah. depending on depending on your aesthetics or whatever, right? You could get something that's reasonable. My question was, and I don't think we ever came to an answer in that conversation we we're having, was you know, we were we were describing unknowingly we were describing two different kinds of photographers not one that not that one's better than the other but we're describing the photographers that intrinsically understand the laws and suggestions and rules of art and photography composition rule of thirds inverse square law you know all those all, things yeah f-stops shutter speeds all that stuff and you understand it kind of you internalize it so that when you click that shutter you kind of know what's happening and you know what you're building versus another kind of photographer where they don't even care about all that stuff totally, all they care yeah. about is what is the final image and do they look great in it or does their subject look great in it and boom and they put it up there in either case one one side of it is the photographer that understands the mechanics and the art and the science and physics of photography they can create a certain kind of art the other one can create a certain kind of art but they can both be seen by millions and millions of people so from totally. your perspective who's right is there is there a better I, way i don't know that there's a right or wrong you know i look at somebody like chris burkhardt who has become huge on instagram and, you know, I interviewed him in 2009. He was probably in very early 20s. Mm -hmm. He was already a fantastic photographer with a huge portfolio of people he was working for. So when he entered Instagram, here's a guy who is completely accomplished mm -hmm. already, mm -hmm. you know, with cover photos on surf magazines and just stunning images. Yep. So it was kind of like when he started putting up his work on Instagram, it was obviously well received and then you're right you have you have others who probably have never even thought about how the you know the technical points of shooting and does it matter processing. right and does it yeah does it matter? i don't know that i can say right or wrong on that i just think it's a difference yeah and, i mean if it's you know, if it's all hey, about look, eyeballs right if it's all about it's getting all about eyeballs getting because what's in your you mind's look, eye to the most people possible then a cell phone and instagram you know, that clearly has opened up the floodgates of creating imagery for better or worse, right? Yeah. My only, here's my only point that I, I think is really important. You know, a photograph or art is meant to be looked at more than three seconds. I mean, yeah. what do you think the average view 
is on Instagram. Uh, a few seconds. Yeah, a few it seconds. It really probably, because, you know, you're flicking through those images and you go, oh, that one's cool. Like, you know, go to the next one. And a piece of art really should have a more lasting impression and a lasting place in your life. Right. Right. And that's why kind of circling back to the genesis of this book was interesting. I interviewed so many different photographers. Joey L, you're familiar with his work. Yeah, right? yeah. I haven't talked to him you in know, years. Yeah. He's he's probably all grown up now. <laughs> yeah, I know. He started at age 16 on the first Twilight set. Wow. He was the, the photographer for that. Yeah. He's, I don't know, he's probably, yeah, early 30s now, but he was a kid for a long time. Yep. But, you know, when I interviewed him, he said, I said, Joey, you know, how did you learn composition and lighting? And he said, I looked at the work of the masters. Yeah. Bob Holmes said that over and over again. Many different photographers I interviewed said that. And I took it to heart and I thought, you know, that's really good advice. Yeah. Look at the work of the masters. See how they compose. See how they use their frame. How did they use light in the in the in the composition itself? Yeah. And that's why you'll see in my book not just photographs, but many, many, many classical paintings I use as examples. I think I think what what we're describing, and we discussed this yesterday with my friend. We were talking about this. Um, we're describing two different life forms here right so there's the artist photographer life form that like you know like the joey l's and the bambi cantrell's and the scott kelby's and you know on and on there are those folks and then there are the uh the folks that i don't know i mean maybe there's a new word like photographer may not be the right word for for people that that are creating art maybe it's just artists and but they're creating art but they're they're not really paying attention to the old masters and yeah. you know the physics of light and properties of light and all that stuff. Is that fair? I think so. And hey, look, if you compare our generation with, say, Ansel Adams and Edward Weston and the painstaking process that they would go through to produce one image, mm -hmm. they probably look at us like, oh, those those guys are cutting so many corners here, you know. That's not real All photography. They, they shoot it, you know, digital and they go into a Photoshop and, you know, you could look down on that just as easily. Yeah. But I think it's a it's just a continuous process in the world of art. There's always a, a movement that is moving forward, but then there's also those those people who go backwards, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I saw a friend of mine sent me this book of tin type surf photography oh, yeah. i don't know if you've seen that one no i haven't seen it but i remember tintype yeah. yeah so this whole collection of tintypes i mean pretty amazing i mean that's the process you have to go through to produce one image is just staggering yeah in the end these are all tools and that's why i refer to composition as a set of tools and i liken it to learning how to cook because, you know, if we take this approach to cooking where you have to be sort of intuitive, you have a lot of really bad meals yeah. because your intuition may lead you, hey, you know, I'm going to mix cordon bleu <laughs> and uh, burritos together. That's I'm getting work. sick just listening to you. <laughs> yeah, that's just a bad combination. And maybe some genius fusion chef will one day make that work. But yeah. You know, if you don't understand the fundamentals, you're probably not going to come out with a meal that you really enjoy. That and and how do you, that's how the do you key. Learn? Yep, that's the key. Yeah, it's uh, the analogy I used the other day was driving, right? So and I like to use the driving analogy for different things. Uh, in this case, it was you could be a mechanic and understand the combustion engine, how brakes work, how transmissions work you know, the electrical system in the car. And then when you get in that car to drive and you turn the wheel left, you under you understand what linkages all are the physics, you, the physics and how you understand how all that's going and how it's getting you from point A to point B. But at the same time, if you go forward and you look at a person that is just getting in the car and they understand if I turn the key or press the button, and press the gas, I'm going to go forward. They don't care about, care about anything care beyond about that. Stuff. You know, in the yeah. end, they're still going to get to the same location. But I would argue that the, the person that understands how the car works has more control over the car. 
much more control. That is total, totally true. Yeah. And I, I liken it in photography to, you know, Joe McNally talks about the language of light. That's a really great way to look at it. Mm -hmm. And I look at the vocabulary of composition. If your vocabulary is limited, you're going to end up kind of using the same words over and over again, mm -hmm. words in quote, yep. or, or approaches. But if you have a broad vocabulary, you may not use all those all the time, but at least you know that they're there. Just like you said, you understand the inner workings. You're going to have a broader perspective on the subject and you may pull out one out of the blue and you you remember this one circular composition for instance mm -hmm. or diagonal lines and you think wow perfect example for diagonal lines let me let me use it yeah yep you know but you got to know what those terms are you, you got to know them in your like, like you say you got to know the you got to know what the rules are so that you can fracture them <laughs> bend know? them bend them and bend ignore them. them as needed you know it's ignore you. as needed yeah so For let's sure. back to the book. So um, wrapping this up, I know that you are. So the book is launched. It's available now. This is this goes to creating amazing photos, right? That's out now. It's on Amazon. You can pre-order it. It actually will release on May fifteenth. Mm -hmm. But I'd love to have people pre-order it. And by the way, whatever price is currently, it's it's eighteen ninety nine. But when it launches, it will go, it will drop down, and you'll end up getting it at the current price. So okay. if it drops down to twelve ninety nine, and you're doing you're doing a book release or a book signing for this in at B and H in New York, right? Yeah, I'm doing uh, their event space May twenty fourth. If anybody's in New York, please mm -hmm. stop by. It's four o'clock in the event space at B and H. I'm going to talk about the book. I'm going to sign copies. It's going to be a lot of fun. Cool. And you're you're going on a mutual friend of ours podcast. Yeah. As well. You want to talk about that a little bit? Or is that secret? Let's keep it secret. But All right. It's a big name in photography and you'll hear about it as as things roll forward. And yeah. I'm very happy to be doing that because he reaches a lot of people just like you and everybody has a different flavor, you know, and how yeah. they present their material. So it should be a lot of fun. Absolutely. All right. Well, tell us one more time the name of the book and where people can go to grab it. Yeah, it's called The Secrets to Creating Amazing Photos, 83 Compositional Tools. And the easiest place to find it is just type my name into Amazon, Mark, M-A-R-C-S-I-L-B-E-R. -E and by the way, that's how you can find me on YouTube also and Instagram, which is handy. I just use my name. Perfect. You, and you'll find uh, you'll find all my stuff there. All right, Mark Silver. Thanks a lot for coming on, man. It was a pleasure seeing you. We gotta we gotta end this this yearly sort of cadence solstice of I us am. meeting. Right? We gotta Every year up the frequency. <laughs> In May, we're just gonna we might as well schedule 2019 and 2020. It's I'll have crazy. A new book out. It's crazy. Well, cool, man. Thanks for coming on and congratulations Thank on you, the book. Thank you, Frederick. My pleasure. All right, take care. This is Twitter.